Hey everyone, it's your girl Tara Michelle. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel, Opinionated Scents. Our safe space to discuss all things fragrance, whether we like them or not. Today we're going to be talking about my complete decant or travel size collection. Now, it's not fully complete because there are some that I actually want to get full bottles of one day. So I'm keeping them separate and maybe I'll do them in a separate video because all of the ones I'm going to talk about today are ones that I do not want full bottles of and a couple that I already have full bottles of, but because they don't last long, I'll keep the travel sizes to top up throughout the day. So I won't be talking notes, not at length. I have way too many travel sizes and decants to do that in this video, but I will state that I have decided that moving forward for the rest of May and into June, I am going to use just my travel sizes. I know that sounds crazy, but I want to do reviews on them. All of these fragrances that, again, I right now feel like I don't need a full bottle, but maybe they'll change my mind when I'm wearing them on my skin instead of just test strips. So let's go ahead and jump right into the video. First up, we have one that I sold a full bottle of. I really do like this fragrance, but I found that I was never reaching for it. And that's my new standard for whether or not I'll give something away or sell it, you know. Am I reaching for this? Has it been a year or two since I've touched this? Have I had it on the chopping block before? Am I on the fence about it? You know, then it's time to get rid of it. This is Vince Camuto Illuminaire. It's just a little scent bird sample. This is a very clean, fresh, airy fragrance. So pretty. I don't know why I wasn't reaching for it, but it is really, really pretty. It's more for the woman who likes a nice signature scent that she can wear every day. Like teachers and nurses, that's the type of fragrance you can get away with wearing in those occupations. Librarians, people who aren't looking for too much personality or pizzazz in their fragrances. Um... This is Tom Ford Soleil Blanc, and this is Eau de Soleil Blanc. I sold one or two of my decants of these because I actually own full bottles of them now, but I'm keeping the, I just love those fragrances. I mean, one is like a lighter, creamier coconut, that's Soleil Blanc, and then Eau de Soleil Blanc is the EDT version, and it is one of the best beachy citrus fragrances ever created. I simply love it. This is called Transcend and it's by PH. I don't know. Scent Elixir. Elixir de Parfum. This is those floor people, I think. This is, um, you get these from Sephora, Ulta, somewhere. And it's like a mist that you just put on your skin afterwards and you shake it up and it's, it's, it's very, very interesting. But it's one of those things that you can put on your skin right after you got the shower and it adds like moisturization, almost like an oil or a lotion, as well as a very nice, clean fragrance. It's interesting. When you, when you look at it and you shake it up and it turns colors, it's, I mean, it's a trip. It's fun just to play with, if nothing else. But it's a very light fragrance, so it's definitely for bedtime. I don't think it's full bottle worthy. Um, This is, <laughs> I didn't get, I, I think I have two more of these. This is C. Fiore by the house of uh, Giorgio Armani. This is just beautiful. I purchased like four of these off of Macari before I caught a full bottle on sale. And yes, love them. Um, moving right along, two of these are the same. Okay, these are from the house of Sylvain Delacourt. I've talked about this house before. These two little small ones are Smeraldo. That name is hilarious. And this one is Lily Lang. Yeah, Lily Lang. I love these fragrances. These are fresh, crisp beautiful citrus fragrances that I just adore. Very pricey house though, so. This is Blood, Tuscan Blood Orange from Pacifica. 
Uh, this is a fragrance I'm take, I am take on vacation. Come on. And then this one is the Hawaiian Ruby Guava. Is that what it's called? Yes. This is the one I took to Mexico. Oh, my gosh. These are beautiful, beachy, summer, tropical fragrances. <sighs> Where are next? Um, okay. This is Armani C. Passion. Um, I'm actually about to sell that one. My full bottle of C. Passion and C. Passion Intense. I never reach for them. I never wear them. They were never my favorite from the line. And I reaches, I recently reaches, what what is what does that even mean? Um, I recently purchased a full bottle of something else in that line and needed to make room on the shelf, to be honest. So again, keep out for my declutter video. It's coming up. Okay. This is Mancera Roses and Chocolate. Anyway, back to the C. Passion. The reason I'm going to keep the travel size is because it's not a bad fragrance. Um, but I'm going to force myself to wear it, you know, because I do like it a little bit. And it's the time of year where I can get away with that. And then once I'm done with it, I'm done with it. I want to experience it, but I don't need a full bottle to do that. Okay, this is Mancera Roses and Chocolate. Mm, baby. Okay, so with this fragrance. Soon as you smell it, like if you've ever sprayed it before, the moment that you smell it, it smells like pure, like chocolate powder, like cocoa powder, um, just beautiful, like a mix of milk chocolate and dark chocolate in a powder form, right? But when you spray it on your skin, in the top for me, the chocolate and the rose clash so much. Like nobody ever taught these two kids how to play well with each other at all, ever. And then somehow in the mid, they figure it out. They start to get along. Who knows? Maybe they start dating or something. I don't know. And then the dry down is very pretty. However, I don't need a full bottle of this because I'm just not into fighting for a fragrance. If I got to keep fighting and playing back and forth and ignoring certain parts of you that last 10, 20, 30 minutes, no, no, I don't have to do that because the majority of my collection doesn't make me do that. So I'm about to get real picky with some stuff. I wouldn't be surprised if you saw some brand new releases like that new Olympia um, leaving. Because, I mean, I just don't know. Here's some scent bird. You know, this is the one thing I don't like about scent bird is that you don't know what's in it. Okay, so this is La Vanilla Pure Vanilla. Um, a really pretty, very simplistic vanilla. Like, you always need those. And... Did I say why I didn't like the scent burgers? They don't have the name on them, if I didn't say that. Lord, help me. This is Juicy Couture Viva La Juicy La Fleur. Okay. In between La Fleur and Soiree. Those are my two favorite from the Viva La Juicy line. You know what, though? La Bubbly is pretty, too. Oh, I love La Bubbly. So, anyway. That LaFleur um, sample from Scentbird is what made me fall in love with LaFleur and now I have a full bottle. But I'll finish that one because there isn't much in it. And now to the fragrance net ones who are nice enough to put the name on the outside. So we have Prada Infusion, De Fleur, De Ranger. You know these names. I can't with these. This is too much. Very beautiful effervescent orange. My problem with the Prada Infusion line is for me, they don't last long enough for that price tag. Not interested. Next, we have Angel Muse, which, um, first of all, I love the gold, you know, little thing. But I own Angel Muse, but only a one ounce. It is not one that you ever need to top up, to be honest. So you don't need to travel with it unless you don't know how to spray your fragrances. Um, but I mean, I would never get rid of anything that had Angel Muse in it. It's a top 10 for life fragrance for me. So there's that. Next, Givenchy Dahlia Divine Le Nectar de Parfum. I now have a full bottle of this as well, but um, I can definitely keep this with me to top up for sure. And another scent bird. So let's pull it out. So annoying. This is English Laundry Notting Hill. So I do believe I sold the other decants I had from the rest of the line because I sold the full bottle of Notting Hill. It was the most elegant 
more sophisticated one of the bunch and i don't really do a lot in my life to where i need a whole bunch of elegant sophisticated perfumes so i sold it and just kept the travel next up we have la petite robe noir edp this is the one i don't like this is the one that smells like cherry cough medicine but why am i keeping it i don't know i've tried to sell decants before on macari and it just didn't work so i'm just gonna wear it until it's gone um this is ombre imperial or the parfum i don't know who this is by but this is one of the most beautiful amber fragrances i've ever smelled in my life okay this is a uh, van cleef and arpels but it doesn't last at all um and for an amber fragrance i get maybe two hours out of it and then you got to top up so this one is penhaligon's kensington amber um this one was okay Oh, no, this one was really good. Okay, it's been a minute since I played with this. I'm not even going to lie. I haven't sprayed these things since I tested them on a strip and then I just put them up. Um, I was purchasing a lot of amber fragrances because I was determined to try to build up a good five or six in my collection because I really love dark, rich, slightly spicy ambers. Um, This is Michael Kors Wonderlust Old Fresh EDT. Pretty. Yeah, pretty citrus floral. This is Prada Infusion the Iris. I like this one. Yeah, really beautiful. You know what? I don't think I've smelled one from that line that I didn't like. Again, longevity is an issue for me, but I've only tested them. I haven't done full wears. So that is why I'm wearing these decants now. I'm not just getting them and going, oh, I like that when I put it in the closet. I'm going to wear these things and then I will review them for you guys. Okay. Miss Dior Blooming Bouquet. Well, we all know that it doesn't last. Like if you own a bottle of Miss Dior Blooming Bouquet, you know it doesn't last. And therefore, of course, you keep something that you can top up throughout the day. So you don't necessarily have to take that like rectangle clunky bottle around. Um, This one, oh, Creed Virgin Island Water Eau de Parfum. This is beautiful. I've heard a lot of people um compare this to Eau de Sol Le Blanc. No, they are very different um in every way to me. This is very pretty. It does not smell like Eau de Sol Le Blanc to me at all. Both of them can be used for the same thing. You can wear them at the beach. You can wear them on vacation. You can wear them just in hot weather. Even if you're at home, nice, clean, fresh, zesty fragrances, but they're different. Um, I would love to own a full bottle of this. However, it's Creed. The price tag, doing too much. Next up, I have Valentino Valentina Blush. So if you know about Valentino Poudre, there's another one called Valentino Pink, which is pink. And then the blush is like an orangey bottle. And it is a really pretty fragrance, just like pink, just like Poudre. Well, you know what? I started to dislike Poudre and I sold it. I didn't really. Mm -mm. But the blush is like a nice, cute, fruity fragrance, but it doesn't last long enough for me. And when my sister told me she had run out of perfume, some of the ones I gifted to her, that was one of them. So I kept a decant because... You know, it's just, it, I was never going to finish that bottle. I rarely ever reached for it, so. But it is pretty, you know. Um, This is Hermes Eau de Rhubarb Ecarlates Eau de Cologne. Like, why am I reading a novel for the title of a perfume, bro? So ridiculous. Um, This one is very unique. And I am going to enjoy wearing it knowing that I only have a decant. Have you ever had that? We have a fragrance where you're like, ooh, I would never own a bottle of this, but this is definitely something I could wear here or there. Like, you know, just to prove a point or just to do a review or just to say you stepping outside of your comfort zone of things that you would normally go for. That is what that fragrance gives me. The let's just go for a wild ride type of thing. This is Live Irresistible or the Parfum. So I bought big bottles of the EDT and the Delicios, and I still wanted to know what the EDP was about, though. So I purchased this one, and I like it. All three of them are super juicy, super sweet, fruity floral. 
Next, we have Boucheron Oud de Carthage EDP. This is two seconds away from being way too masculine for me. It actually is unisex. You know, it has a spice and a oud that I can actually tolerate, so I like it, but it's much more for winter. So I don't know if I'm going to be wearing this one unless we have another 40 degree weather day. But again, it's like a winter, fall, cold weather date night fragrance to me. Not like just going to work and just doing all that for work. No. Um, this one is Boys Day Iris by Van Cleef and Arpels. I love this one. I love this one. But again, longevity. I am not going to spend 70, 80, 90, 100 bucks or chase around some unicorn fragrance that is never available if it is only going to give me two to three hours of, you know, sillage projection. I'm just not doing it. And strangely enough, with all of the Van Cleef and Arpels uh, fragrances that I have purchased, Orchid Eve and is the only one that lasts all day on me. And yet everybody else I've seen or I've talked to say that they get no longevity out of it. It's the weirdest thing. That um, Rose Rouge, it's a very light one too. Boucheron Ambre de Alexandrie. This is one of the best perfumes I've ever smelled from Boucheron. This, but it costs so much. I love it so much though. So don't be surprised if you see me end up with it. Uh, this is Hot Couture by Givenchy Eau de Parfum. I always thought that it was Hope Couture, but no, this absolutely says H-O-T. So, you know, this, um, somebody said this smells like cigarettes. Thank goodness not to me because I would never, but it's a nice, sweet, girly fragrance. I definitely need to get some wear out of it to be able to tell you guys what I truly think, but I do think it's pretty. Alien. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Alien is a very pretty fragrance. When you smell it from here, or if it's like near Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and you sm you spray it one time in the air in a room, beautiful. But to wear this on me, mm -mm. because more than one spray just chokes. I mean, no, no, thank you. Um. Oh, okay. This one is Aura by Mugler. I wanted to get my hands on this so much because I heard so many terrible things about it. And I was like, you know, when people just describe this as something so weird, they can't get into it. I'm kind of intrigued. So I like it. How weird is that? I tend to not like everything that, you know, people are jumping on a bandwagon on. And then when everybody's like, oh, no, I'm like, oh, you know, I kind of dig it. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be difficult. Mm, I like it. I really do. Let me wear it, see how it does with my chemistry, figure out if it's made for cooler weather or warmer weather. Like there's a lot of if, ands, or buts in there. So, but I like it on the test strip and I like it from the little sprayer. California Reverie by Van Cleef and Arpels. Another one that I really like that I can never find. Oh, this smells so good. I get a nice little amount of um, longevity from it. I would still top it up at four hours though. So this one is La Vie A Belle Intense Eau de Parfum. This is like one of the very few that I don't own. I think I don't own that one. I don't own the In Rose one, cause I mean, why? And the Absolu or Lapsalu or something like that, cause I can never find it. And when I do, I don't like the price. So this one is Bond Number no. 9, The Scent of Peace, which reminds me so much of Lalique Amethyst. I really, really like it. I don't think there's anything left in there because when I went to um, Virginia Beach, it's one of the fragrances that I took. This is J'adore EDT. So I used to own a full bottle of the Eau de Parfum. I really, really liked it, but I never reached for it, you know? Mm. 
This one smells so good. I like them both. The EDT to me is less champagne-y and more fresh. Prada Infusion Iris Cedre. Now, this one? Yeah. This is effervescent and amazing. But it also has a masculine element to it for me. But I still really, really like it. I'm going to wear that. That's another one of those fragrances where I'm like, yeah, I would never want to own a full bottle because I know I would never go through it. But I'm glad that I have this and I get to experience it and I get to wear it for a little while. So I used to always say I was going to do a video about this house. And if you guys want me to do one more in depth, I can. But this pretty much is my whole collection right here. So I am talking about the house of Shea and Blue. Very expensive house. I'm just going to state that for fact because it is. So this one is called Blood Oranges. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's, I just love Blood Orange. Like, I think I have several of those uh, fragrances. I mean, from different houses, like the Tuscan Blood Orange from Pacifica and this one. And I'm pretty sure I have a body spray like that. Um, White Peaches. Let me tell you guys something. This is one of the best smelling fragrances I've ever smelled in my life. That touts a peach note. Ooh, baby, mm, 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 mm. it's party. This one is called Sicilian Limes. Okay, you know what? This is this is definitely a a unisex fragrance. This is not a um a beautiful feminine sweet lime. This is a dry lime. There is more citrus in it than there was in La Spezia Lime from Dua because I had to sell that one. It was just too flat. Too flat. This one has a little bit of citrus. I mean, not a little bit of citrus. A little bit of sweetness, but not enough to my liking. Like this, I really feel like a man could pull this off better. So when I wear this, I will be pairing it with Limon Verde from the Aqua Allegoria line from the House of Your Line. I just need to sweeten this up. This lasts forever on my skin. And Aqua Allegoria, as we all know, is not the longest and the greatest in the longevity category. I get about four hours before I need to top up with Limon Verde. I feel like if I combine those two, I might be able to pull off an eight-hour day. We'll see. This one is English Cherry Blossom. This pairs so beautifully with the Japanese Cherry Blossom um, from Bath & Body Works. And the last one that I have is called Mandarin. This is the Shea and Blue Light. So it's a light scent spray with other essential oils. But here's the thing. This lasts longer than some of their non-light fragrances. Oh my gosh. I love this. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, There is another one that's called like Salt and Caramel. It blew up the scene, you know, not too long ago. Everybody was ranting and raving about it. It smells like stale butter popcorn. It will be up in my declutter. All of my declutter perfumes are sitting right up on my stand in front of me. I'll be shooting that video probably tomorrow. But no, 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 no. The last group of decants or travel sizes that I have to talk about are from Be Layered. So, um, this bottle is stunning. It's all black. I love it. And it has like layered on the side and then their little, the L for layer. So I'm guessing they dropped the B and be layered. Um, beautiful, beautiful. And, but you still have to do like St. Bird and, and pull it out to see what it is. This is Christmas in Egypt. Christmas in Egypt is one of the just most beautiful fragrances I've ever smelled in my life. There is an apple note in here, and I'm not even sure if apple is really in it, but it pulls apple from me, and it genuinely makes me happy. Like a child who knows Christmas is coming, they've been good that year, and they're getting everything that they ask for. That is what Christmas in Egypt does for me. I absolutely love it. Every time I've tried to go back and get a full bottle, it's always sold out. I don't know if this is discontinued. It was a one-time limited edition thing or what, but... Um, I'm hoarding it. I'm holding on to it for dear life because I love it so much and just smelling it like this from here just, just gives me such good feels. So yeah, again, that's Christmas in Egypt by Laird.
Next up, we have Runaway Love from Be Layered. Um, this one smells so good. This is so feminine and powdery and sweet. That smells really good. Like, I'm kind of scared to keep smelling these Be Layered ones because I will go and buy these and I don't want to. This one is French Kiss, which I like. It's a clean, floral, feminine fragrance. You know, definitely something that is signature scent worthy. You could also wear that to work, you know, and nobody's going to be off put. This one is Bella the Irresistible. Now, the funny thing is, is I have multiple samples of this one and I have this decant. And then you guys know I have a bottle because I talked about it in the battle of uh, my Dua video because Bella the Irresistible is a dupe. Bella the Irresistible is a dupe for Cassili from Parfums de Marley. So can you tell that I love it? Last three guys. Um, Pure Love. Pure Love is so pretty. That's all I can say about it. It's pretty. It's absolutely full bottle worthy. All the ones I have from Layered for me are full bottle worthy. That's why I have them. And Mia's Blend. Mia's Blend is hands down the only female myrrh heavy fragrance that I've ever liked and that I would actually ever call feminine. It is definitely for the fall and for the winter when it's cold outside. It's one of those just snuggle up and get cozy or date night super sexy fragrances. And it is such a perfect introduction into the note of myrrh if you are not already used to it or if you have never been introduced to it. This one is Stinky Rose. Guys, like this name is hilarious. It is anything but stinky. This is a beautiful musky rose. And I never thought I would even say that sentence. Beautiful musky rose. When I say musky, it is heavy, potent, pungent with the musk, baby. But somehow it works. Well, guys, that's it for all of my travel decant um, fragrances that I don't consider full bottle worthy. I do want to give a side note and say that the Shea and Blue ones that I love, I agree that they are full bottle worthy by the smell. But because they're so expensive, they're not. That's the only reason. So when we're talking about white peaches, one day I may break down and buy a bottle of that. Um, then, you know, the lime were not so much because again, it's not feminine enough, but the white peaches, the English cherry blossom, the mandarin. Yes. I think that those are excellent, um, scents. However, I can't justify the price for the size. It's just a really, really expensive house. If you enjoyed this video, please do remember to subscribe to my channel. Please click the like button and select the notification bell so that you never miss any of my future uploads. If you like any of these fragrances or you want to know more, you know where to see me. Come meet me in the comments and we'll talk about it. <laughs> Until then, bye.